This is Modern Homesteading. You're going to have the strength to do it. Here's Sayerman Lumberjil for Svenska. Skulle man säga man är en skogskvinna? Tack. Du har. <laughs> Tita Folga. Lila Hund. <laughs> Cody, your Swedish is beautiful. I'm tired. <laughs> How was that? Um. <laughs> Was it exciting? Yeah, it's very exciting. I like it. <laughs> That's the biggest tree that I've ever cut down with an axe. Well, it's only the second tree I've cut down with a crosscut saw, but it can be done. We had some problems with our technique at first, but towards the end, we, we got a lot lot better. Yeah, and I, you know, I've not really done this ever before, so he was... Yeah. I've, I've worked with a chainsaw, I just haven't worked with a crosscut saw, so... You have the courage of a lion. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> That's scary. That's a, that's a scary thing, but you did really good and you hung in there and I'm, I'm proud of you. It was fun and I'm going to be so sore tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the reason why we cut down this tree, uh, it's right here adjacent to the corner of our garden and our orchard over here. It was such a big tree that um, it was providing shade for probably a third of our garden um, and really affecting our growth. Uh, you know, we live in a high area anyway, so we need all the sudden we can get. Our growing season's pretty short. So, I, we hate to cut down the big trees, but this one here, we actually considered this for several years. And then just made the decision today to do it. Yeah, and it was, um, it wasn't a pretty tree. No, no. no. It, it but, didn't have character. Or... But it'll be put to good use, because the nice thing about it is it's close to the shop, and there's more than enough timber in here uh, to finish up uh, the timber frame project. And so... Woohoo! I'm close enough you can bring me lunch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the boys, uh, Zachariah and Solomon, are actually will be here pretty soon. Uh, we're starting up the Tuesday apprenticeship program again. We took a, a little break off in April. Um, and I know just what I'll have them do today. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll see you guys later. So just a quick look at the stump. This is a this is a big tree. This is almost three foot across, um, and, and we did a really good job here, Mama. This has got. So the reason why I told you we drew that box on the side for you. This is our hinge wood. This is what controlled the tree. So it went exactly where we wanted it to go, and that's why I told we, we didn't want to cut through this. So as we cut through this, then the tree can go up, and it can a barber chair, and kick out and do all kinds of things. But this here holds it and holds it till it goes down and then these things pull out. You just see the force of this, how that pulled out from so high up in the tree, but what a beautiful tree this is. Yeah, just lovely. It smells so nice. Another thing you guys may have noticed uh, when I was uh, chopping was that I used uh, two different axes. I, and the truth of the matter is, is that I didn't have the strength and stamina uh, to swing this Sager chemical uh, for for that length of time it just it became too heavy for me and I became too fatigued and I was getting sloppy and getting glancing blows it just attests to the the weakness of my body uh, to, to, you know in, in relationship to doing this physical work and so what I ended up doing was I grabbed this um, small uh, uh, artisan uh, small cruiser axe so it did have some casualties um, broke the safety or broke the the safety guard on Wanda and the crosscut saw. Actually, she was a little bit small for this tree at six and a half feet, and we didn't have a lot of stroke. And I over pulled on uh, Mrs. Wrangler's start and, and, and broke that off. So that's disappointing, but uh, that's how you learn. Also, I broke the handle on uh, Granddad's mall. I over uh, overreached, and I hit the wedge right there, getting sloppy and tired and that's what happened so the way I look at it is that the next handle will even be better so what we're doing here is called girdling the tree there's a couple reasons this tree here is pretty close to our house 
And trees, if you're following trees that are close to buildings, barns and such, they're, they're notoriously full of nails. People use them for clotheslines, lines, lots of different things. Kids pound nails in them, birdhouses. So one thing we do not want to do with our, our crosscut saws is get into metal of any sort. So we'll take the axes, we'll go around and we'll girdle the tree, all the bark off of it, and that will help to maintain the sharpness and integrity of our saw. Also, the bark collects a lot of dirt and dust and rocks and such, and that also leads to the premature wear of a crosscut saw. So we'll sacrifice the axes because the axes, when it comes to uh, you know which ones are more valuable to us, which ones are the most important, what we should take care of the most in our tool cache, uh, th those are the sacrificial lambs compared to our vintage crosscut saws. Jack, I see that you've uh, discarded your little hatchet and you, you've got my little forest axe now. You're getting stronger every day, getting bigger axes. Well, I still use mine, although with work like this, it's better. You don't hit your knuckles as much. Better, huh? 